All right, so if you ever see this kind of thing, it's a, it's a, you see this sort of oil slick color moire, and it's the interference pattern between the, the red, green, and blue filters that are, mo it's the, called a mosaic that's on the surface of the chip, and the frequency of the weave in the fabric. And sometimes it's really neutral fabrics that give you the worst, you know, khakis, or in this case, like a herringbone, very tight herringbone tweed. Um, and it's, it's easy enough to get rid of the color, but sometimes you end up with a, a sort of a luminance moire once you do that. So, so the trick here is I'm going to duplicate this document and convert the duplicate into LAB. And we go back to our uh, normal document. I'm going to sample a color here, make a layer. Uh, and uh, since this is more or less uniform, I'm going to fill that layer with the sampled color, change the mode to color. Okay. Now we just sort of mask off those yellow buttons. Okay, now you've gotten rid of the color moray, but you still have this strange, you know, and it's like you're not going to get in there and clone that out because you've got this texture to deal with. Uh, and so there's a little trick here. When we convert this to LAB, we've got two channels, an A channel and a B channel. So the B channel, it's interesting, that's pretty much the strongest pattern that corresponds to this in here, right? So I'm going to make a, an empty layer. And then this is sort of an advanced uh, move here. Uh, we're going to do image, apply image. And we can find any channel from any document that's open as long as they're the same size. So I can go to my copy, which is in LAB, and get the B channel and we'll invert it, and it's just being applied into that empty layer. It doesn't matter whether you put normal or multiply because the layer was empty. And now we use overlay. We'll probably have to reduce the opacity a little bit to it. So right about there, it takes it out. And uh, I this used to really haunt me in the early days of digital before the cameras got to be much higher res because almost any clothing I photographed the, the, the frequency of the chip was just at the right frequency and I would get more array all the time. It was just horrible in the early days. Now I don't see it as much anymore because um, the image has to be sharp enough and at the right frequency. It's very rarely do you see it, but every, every once in a while you do see it. But this technique pretty much takes care of even the most nightmare moire problem. If you have yeah. like old black and white photographs, you scan them in still. If you have black and white photo, if if yeah. if you scan in photographs, the only time you're going to run into trouble with moire is like what she was saying earlier, where she's scanning in something was already printed as line screen. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's got a funky pattern in it already. And it's a regular pattern because line screens are not random unless you use stochastic screening. So there's a, there's a non-randomness to it. And when you scan it in, the resolution of the scan can <coughs> sort of do weird things to the, that line screen. If it's, if it's a regular photograph, there's no line screen. It's totally chaotic. It's just the grain structure of the emulsion, and you'll never get that issue. Um, but this, this is a unique problem to digital capture. It only happens with digital cameras. And nowadays, you're more likely to see it with lower res camera uh, or an older, like, high-end camera that was really sharp. Um, all of the modern cameras have uh, low-pass filters. They have a, like essentially a blurring filter that helps to cut down on this kind of aliasing uh, effect. Anyway, that's the quick uh, moray fix.